everybody, my name is Paul Jeffrey, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to a new era of touring car racing. Of course, it is the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour, and this is round one at the beautiful Valle Lunga circuit in Italy as we head forward into what should be an incredible afternoon of motorsport. And I'm delighted we have got a new member of the team, Lisa, down on pit lane and on the grid, will be here to give you all the insight, all of the drama, all of the news, and all of the excitement as it happens on the racetrack. Brilliant to welcome Lisa into this new era of racing, and it's brilliant to welcome you all here on to this broadcast. So, without further ado, let's go and have a quick word down on the grid with Lisa. Welcome to the start of the very first race here in Vallelunga. Joining me, we have WSC president Marcello Lotti. And Marcello, it's a brand new season, but this year is something different. The Kumo TCR World Tour has gained FIA recognition. How important is that and what difference is that going to make this year? First of all, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, yes, is uh, we are very proud to have this FIA status. And uh, I think this is uh, really important because confirm TCR like leader in the touring car category in the world. And this, uh, for us, uh, like I told you, we are very, very proud. It's an important season. It's the first one. Uh, we hope it's the first of the long-term collaboration with FIA. We are very happy to collaborate with us. We know each other for a long time. And I will see that will be a good benefit for uh, all the championship. And of course, the competition this year will be utilizing Kumo tires, like many TCR series. Why Kumo? I have to say, uh, when we started to discuss with Kumo three, four years ago, they spent one year to develop a, car, a tires and specific for this kind of car. This is the reason because Kumo, and uh, I have to say, after uh, three years of uh, racing with them, not only in the TCR World Tour, but also in the national, regional championship around the world. We are very, very happy. OK, and of course, we have seven events this year with a geographical reach of five continents. Why is that global reach so important? It's important. When you want uh, a world tour or a world status, you have to be in the world. Uh, yeah, you cannot be <laughs> stop in one continent or two continents. So we, this is the reason because uh, we define a calendar strategy. And uh, the calendar strategy was first to reach maximum continent we can. And now I think with Africa, with Marrakesh, the next event. And, uh, okay, we have these five continents that uh, confirm the world status of the series. It's going to be a fantastic season. Enjoy this race. Thank you, Marcello. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, the cars are just starting to line up on the grid. If I can, I want to grab a few words with uh, Michelis. I also want to see if I can grab Jan, but they're still in their cars. Uh, yep, they're still in their cars. They're not available just yet, but let's see if I can... Oh, he's coming out of his car. Yeah. Jan was on pole to the very last moment before Norgo kicked him off. So let's see if we can grab a few words with Lincoln Cosine Racing. So Jan, Jan, just a few words. Let's talk about that qualifying session. You were on pole to the very last minute, and I know Norgo kicked you off, but on a positive, you had great pace out there. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, it was a good quality from us. Um, not easy, you know, uh, like uh, uh, it's the first one of the season. Uh, we, we were looking for, for good pace. Uh, we missed out a little bit, but not much. Uh, Hyundai, uh, Hyundai beat us in the last, very last moment of the qualifying, but uh, I think I really optimized what, uh, what we could have done. So happy about the result, and now it's all down to the race to score good points. Well, let's talk a little bit about this track, a uh, very technical track. Starts are key, difficult to overpass. And I guess for you guys, it's really important to get that balance between that speed and that grip. How would you describe it? Yeah, I think the tire drop-off will be quite big. Uh, I expect we'll have a quite a, uh, a quick rhythm to the race and to follow uh, to follow uh, the cars. Uh, you know, here on the high-speed track like this, it's never easy and uh, you lose quickly the front grip. So it's going to be tough to keep a reasonable balance to the end. We try to adapt the setup to it, but now uh, it's quite damp as well at the moment. So with the few laps we have done, it's very tricky and very edgy to drive, especially on the first high-speed corner. It will be down to some, uh, some very... Uh, 
I think uh, racy actions. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to for it. That's all right, Jan. Thank you. And uh, just picking up on what Jan said then, it's quite damp. And literally in the past hour, we've had a lot of rain. Now the track's dying, uh, drying out. So it'll be interesting to see tyre choice for this race. And just uh, who's going to take that gamble? I want to speak to Esteban Guerreri, if I can get a word with him from Goat Racing. Esteban? Hi. Can I just grab a few words with you? Uh, third position on the grid here. Not bad, considering your team came very last minute to this series. Yeah, absolutely. Can you hold on a second, please? Yep. So you can see my face. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking to the team manager earlier, and I actually didn't realise it was a very last minute entry for you guys. Yeah. You're third on the grid. You'd take that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, very close to the P1. Yeah. So uh, it's a, a good battle already with all three brands in the top three. And uh, yeah, we are happy that we are already in this position for this race. And uh, yeah, let's see what the, the race brings because as you can see, the tarmac is a little bit damp. So yeah, the race start uh, will be tricky. So yeah, I was going to check uh, how was the tarmac around my other competitors. And also just tell us what tire choice will your car be bringing to this race? Well, there is not much that we can hide uh, anymore because if you have asked me half an hour ago, I wouldn't have told you, yeah. but now it's for slicks. Uh, now it's full slicks because the, the track is basically all, all dry except a couple of spots. But actually the, the most wet is around this area because there is a shadow there from the stand. So yeah, we are going to go with all with slicks, I guess. But uh, yeah, the first few laps with a bit tricky lines, you know, a bit damp somewhere, yeah, will be fun. Best of luck. Thank you, Esteban. Now, I've seen Fed walking that way. He's just speaking to his teammate, Jan. I want to grab a few words with him. He's been racing with his team for 13 years. I just want to see what keeps him motivated at this level. Fed, you're the person, you're the driver I need. Oh, he's, he's literally running away from me. That's fine. I'll see who else I can grab. Let's see if we can speak to... Here we are. Hello. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Hello, very good. <laughs> good. Uh, just tell us about that qualifying session. Uh, qualifying went uh, really good, to be honest. Positive, P4 in the Q2. Was a very really good run on the first run of Q2, which I was really strong. The car was working really good. I yeah. think better than yesterday, free practice too. I had a better feeling. And was a, a shame that in the Q, in the second run of Q2, I had a small mistake from my side driving in T4, which it cost me probably a couple of positions, but still we are on the second round, yep. which is very good. Um, it's looking very challenging race with a dump truck, slick tires, yep. so it's going to be challenging, not an easy race. Absolutely not. Let's talk a little bit about this season. It's going to be a tough grid. FIA are now on board. Things just seem to be getting bigger and better this year, aren't they? Yeah, the season looks really excited as well. We go to some places that uh, we've never been in the past, like Interlagos. That's very really yeah. amazing track. USA, Mid-Ohio, um, China, Macau. So the calendar is, is such an amazing calendar. As a driver point of view, it's... Uh, lovely to be racing there on those calendars, so okay. it's very long, it's very long. Well, enjoy qualifying, thank you so thank much. You. Okay, let me see what other victims I can grab. I still don't believe Jan ran away from me, but that's fine, that's fine. I can see Marco over here, Marco Booty, he's uh, the next big thing. All eyes are on him. Oh, i just grab a few words, sorry, Marco. Uh, New to the team, uh, how are you feeling about your first qualifying race? Yes, yeah, um, very emotional moment for me. Yeah, we start uh, from the first time uh, World Championship uh, with uh, not an uh, official team, but with the support of uh, Jazz Motorsport, uh, with Gold Racing and uh, with Oriola, like my team manager. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Let's see, not a, not a very easy race to start the championship, but. Uh, Hey, well, your teammate, Esteban Guerreri, well known in touring cars, huge amount of experience. What advice has he given you before this first round? Uh, a lot, but I can't speak now to that. Hey, tell me, no one's, no one's listening, no one's watching, it's fine, it's just between you and me. No, for sure, I'm also happy to be uh, with Esteban in uh, our team because yeah, I can uh, uh, improve a lot of my driving skills, so it's, uh, it's so, so, so good for me. Okay, best of luck. Thank you for chatting to us. Um, I can see Santiago over there. Maybe he won't run after me. Santiago? I'll wave at him and then I caught his eye. 
That's the key to these uh, great interviews. Santiago, uh, the sun is shining. All is good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I mean, uh, it's just we're back racing now, and uh, it's, uh, the sun is out, but the conditions are damp conditions, you know. I mean, uh, it's dry in some places. Uh, in other places, it's wet. So it's the same story for everyone. So we are going to keep racing and uh, focus on our race and uh, hope we can move forward some places. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, all good. And of course, I already know the answer to this question, but obviously as the season's long, what's going to be your most preferred round? I know which one you're looking forward to. My favorite round, you say? Oh, the one you're looking forward to the most. Uh, of course, Uruguay. Exactly. Yeah, no question. Uh, we're going back uh, to Uruguay, my home race. Uh, last year, it was like over 20,000 people. The president went there and uh, so many fans, family and everything. So yeah, going back again this year is amazing. We can improve the show as well. We, we're trying to do the best. and. Uh, but for now, we're focusing here that we are in Bailunga. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you say it will be Uruguay. Well, best of luck for, for this first race. Thank you so much. OK, good luck to all the guys here on the grid. It's almost time for that very first race. Back to commentary. Lisa Leyland there on the grid. Thank you very much. Excellent work, as always. And it's wonderful to hear from these drivers ahead of, as we say, the very first race of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. Valley Lunga is a beautiful circuit to go motor racing. We're just about an hour away from the centre of Rome. The weather, though, has been a little bit disappointing, it has to be said. You wouldn't believe it from looking at these pictures, but it has been a torrential downpour for the last hour, hour and a half or so. The previous races, a few delays, hence the reason that we are a little bit later on air than we would normally expect to be. But the sun has come out, the track is drying very quickly, and as many of our drivers have mentioned during that grid walk, we're expecting slick tyre running. What does this mean for us watching from home? Well, what it means is we're going to have 20 cars going racing in conditions that they've not sampled at racing speed on tyres that are not optimal for these opening few laps. The temperature will be low, the grip will be sparse, and I dare say there will be more than the fair share of drama in the opening few corners. This presents jeopardy and opportunity in equal measure for each and every one of these drivers. Somebody that we're looking at right now, the man sitting on pole position for this race, Norbert Mikulis, he doesn't want any drama whatsoever. He needs a clean run off of the line to convert the pace that we see in that BRC Hyundai N Squadra Corsa machine into what he hopes will be a first race victory of the year. Norby emboldened from the success of 2023. He had a great year in the Kumo uh, TCR World Tour, as it was called back then, winning at the final round at uh, Macau to take the overall title from Jan Elishay. So Norby will be looking very firmly through the windshield and looking to push into this race. There is Jan Elishay that we're speaking about, the Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing. He'll start on the front row of the grid. We know Jan is good in grip-limited conditions. We know that Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing machine is a very potent weapon indeed. The Frenchman will be looking for a good, clean start and to chip away at his old rival, Norbert Michaelis, just ahead. That's going to be one of the battles that will very firmly dictate our attention over the course of these next few minutes when we get racing for the first time this year. But Esteban Gurrieri, a bit of an outlier as well. He is at the sharp end of the grid. We heard from him on the grid. He's starting in third position. There he is in the GOAT Racing Honda Civic FL5 Type R. Esteban back full-time in tin-top touring cars where he's made his international name and immediately picking up exactly where he left off. Plenty of pace, plenty of experience, great racing guile as well. Gurrieri senses an opportunity to start the year in the best way possible. Slick tyres on board that car. He mentioned there's a shade, the shadow from the big grandstand on the start-finish straight. Ironically, the wettest part of the track is the part of the track where you need the best launch, the starting grid. Whoever manages that, the best of these drivers, will carry that advantage into the opening lap, potentially with the opportunity to make or lose positions in these opening few moments of the brand-new titled Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. Mikel Azcona, car number 196, the customary number of the Spanish driver, 
remains with the BRC Hyundai N Squadra Corsa team. He had a good qualification session, left a little bit of time on the table, he was telling me earlier. He's happy for fourth position, expected better during the course of the session. I don't think he'll stay fourth for very long. Expect the Spaniard to work his way up the grid as the race progresses. Good news for Mikel. He feels hungry, he feels positive, he feels like he can charge forward. A worrying thing for Esteban Gurrieri in third. The Honda driver will have a ha half an eye on the rearview mirror, but very much focused on going forward. And 20 cars, of course, line up on the grid. We've got 11 full-time Kumo FIA TCR World Tour drivers. And then we've got some drivers joining us for this event from uh, the Coppa Italia Turismo series. So that's great to see some of our Italian friends joining the field here at Vallelunga as well. And there's been some good performances throughout. Uh, Simonez in 11th position is the fastest of the Coppa Italia drivers. Ted Bjork, the experienced Swedish driver, Ted Bjork, we briefly caught a glimpse of there. He's, uh, as always, absolutely delighted to be racing on the world stage in touring cars. And he's hoping for big things from this season. Very experienced former champion in TCR touring car competition. Big opportunity for Ted Bjork to continue his uh, illustrious career here at the top level. And somebody at the opposite end of the spectrum, Marco Butte, the young Italian driver we've seen much of of late. He's going to be one of the big names of the 2024 year, I am sure. As you can see on screen, air temperature 12 degrees, drop one from qualifying this morning. Track temperature, a sedate 20 degrees C as well. But most importantly for us all, especially the drivers on track, blue skies. Bit of cloud, fair enough. But blue skies, we would not have expected that just one hour ago. Track conditions are greasy, but it looks like we're going to be free of rain over the course of the next 20 or 30 minutes. Marching Hua, briefly saw there with uh, resplendent with dramatic hairstyle, looking good this year, Ma, is uh, one of those drivers that is just so capable of blistering pace when the uh, mood is upon him. And I'm expecting Marching Hua to be a driver that very firmly features at the sharp end of the field every single weekend we go racing. John Philippi, this is a new name to the Kumo T FAI, FIA TCR World Tour. He's here for the full season alongside this team, Volcano Motorsport. They've taken the Audi RS3 LMS TCR. They're going to be representing the four rings. And John Philippi, we know, is such an efficient and effective driver. Lightning fast, but also someone that's very, very good of extracting the performance and the result out of the car. John had a very good qualification session this morning, eighth on the grid. That'll, of course, be third on the reverse grid tomorrow, just ahead of this man, Santiago Arutia. Santi, very briefly, to Lisa on the grid mentioned when racing in Uruguay last year, the massive crowds of support that he received was sensational to witness firsthand. And obviously, with the weight of expect expectation of a nation behind him, Santi will be hoping to charge forward. And then Bebu Girolami, Nestor Girolami, Bebu, as is more commonly known, he's made the winter switch to the BRC Hyundai N Squadra Corsa team. They've expanded to three cars. It's a new car for Girolami. You'll be asking yourself, I'm sure, why 10th position? Strategic manoeuvre. Tenth position today equates to pole position tomorrow. So Girolami lining himself up for a very strong points-paying weekend. Indeed, Jacopo Gisimenez that we see there. This is one of the Coppa Italia Turismo drivers. He was very strong in qualifying indeed. Unfortunate, though, to line up in 11th and just away from that reverse grid. And this is your starting grid. Norbert Michaelis is pole position from Jan Elche. Third place goes to Esteran Ban Gurrieri, just ahead of Mikel Athcona in fourth place, supporting his teammate, the front two rows of the grid, a Hyundai's. Ted Bjork will start in fifth position. Young Italian Marco Buti is six, just ahead of Marching War and John Philippi, the first of the Audis for Volcano Motorsport in eighth position. Santiago Arrutia will be ninth on the grid. Bebo Girolami will start from tenth position. And then for this and the race tomorrow, 
Jacopo Simenez is in 11th ahead of Sami Taufik. Sami Taufik had a disappointing qualifying by his own admission. We'll start 12th for both races. Fernandez is 13th ahead of Pilati in the Italian driver in the Audi. Barberi will be 15th. Eroge starts in 16th, the Turkish driver with a 1 minute 43. Matasdorfer in the only Alp Opel Astra on the grid is in 17th place. Verhulst starts in 18th. Valentini in 19th. And last on the grid, another Turkish driver, Kaya, in the Audi, will be 20th and last for both races. As you can very clearly see on your screen, the green flag is a waving. We're riding on board with John Philippi. This is, of course, the formation lap to the grid. This is not racing action, don't worry. But this is a valuable opportunity for all of these drivers to get yet another taste of the conditions of this racetrack following the heavy rain that we experienced a little earlier today. They've done sight laps before joining the grid, but while the sun is shining, baking the tarmac here at Valley Lunga, the conditions are changing minute by minute. As much relevant information and data that you can soak up on these conditions, the better for these drivers, because quite frankly, and as Jan Elishe alluded to, to Lisa on the grid, these first laps are gonna be, well, what's the word he used? Racy. I think racy could be uh, optimistic. I think it could be very aggressive, if you ask me. When it needs to be for these drivers. While they're finding their feet, understanding where the grip is, understanding where the pace can be found on the track, that's where opportunities present themselves. Valley Lunga, not the easy circuit on which to overtake. These first few laps will be critical. Anybody who's familiar with touring cars, by the way, will be aware we pay points for qualification. So Norbert Michaelis is, in effect, the leader of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. 15 points for his pole position. Jan Elishay, a further five points adrift. Esteban Gurrieri, seven points further back from Norbe. Mikel Athkona, nine points away from his teammate. Ted Bjork, a further 11 in arrears as well. So points have been paid out to these drivers. Marco Buti, of course, in sixth position as well. An early point store, but there's 80 on offer over the course of the weekend, so there is still very firmly, uh, very firmly an opportunity, sorry, 60 on offer, very firmly an opportunity to score big for each and every one of these drivers. We've got four onboard cameras for you today. Number Michaelis, Jan Elishay, Esteban Gurrieri and John Philippi are carrying onboard cameras and we're looking forward to the footage that they will bring as we go forth into this race. It's been a long winter, hasn't it? It's great to be back. It's great to see the cars looking absolutely resplendent, it has to be said, on the racetrack. And if you like motor racing and you like touring car racing, folks, this is the pinnacle. Get ready. Faces like that will be pulled over the course of the next few laps, I am sure, because this is where the tension is at the absolute maximum for drivers, teams, organisation, fans at the track and fans watching at home. Everything, all the winter, all the hard work, finding sponsors, testing, developing cars, signing contracts for new teams, launching a team in the case of Goat Racing starting in third, all of that is for right here and for right now. Green flag will be waving in a few moments' time and we will be go for the new season, for the new year of the now FIA-sanctioned Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. Don't know about you, but these are the moments I absolutely live for. Let's get ready for 15 laps of racing. More tension in pit lane. The last of the cars, there you can see, that is the Opel Astra pulling up in a position at the back of your field. We're riding on board with the 127 of John Philippi, getting ready to make his first start for Volcano Motorsport. There is a green flag at the back of the field. That signals all is well to go racing. Tune your eyes to the gantry. The lights are on. In a few moments, we are go for 2024. Great start from Elishay in second position on the grid. John Philippi as well, strong. Further back, we've got a stranded car at the back of the grid. That's one of the BRC machines. Let's have a look who that is. Is that Bebu Girolami? I think it might well be, as we see Mikel Athkona side by side through the first corner, not scared of the lack of grip. Dan Elishay at the front of the field takes the lead from Norbert Mikkelis. So that good start was converted in the opening few corners. Mikel Athkona around the 
outside. That is a running wide volcano car of John Philippi. He gets it back on track again. So very little loss of time there. He's just behind Marching Hua, looking to launch an attack. Everybody's slipping and sliding from one side of the racetrack to the other. But Jan Elishe is the man that holds the advantage. Contact further back as well. One of the BRC cars absolutely sideways. That is Athcona. I believe it is. He gets the car, though, recovers the car very nicely. Indeed, he just slots back in behind Ma. There is three cars trying to make space for two. Sami Tofik, very aggressive indeed. Thank you very much on his return to top-level touring cars. Tofik, though, is the one that loses out in that little squabble. Drops behind teammate John Philippi and Athcona and meet in a Cyan Lincoln Co. sandwich just behind the bike of the GOAT racing machine ahead. So, big dramas in the opening few corners, exactly as we predicted. While we're trying to find our way around in these weather conditions, there are changes throughout the field. Marching Wa having a little nubble, nibble at the 199 machine. And Marco Bute, Bute manages to hold on for now as Marching Wa drops back a little, and that allows an opportunity for the cars behind Ramazan Kaya that we saw at the back of the grid started in 20th position in some kind of dramas already. Kaya recovering to the racetrack. We'll keep our eye on that one as it crosses the timing beam. But at the moment, it is Jan Elishe. Pink mirrors on the Cyan Lincoln Co. machine. That's how you see who's driving that car as the race leader. No, but Mikulis in second. Esteban Gurrieri in third. And here is some drama again. Mikel Athcona to the inside of Marching War. Mikel Athcona gets the job done on the brakes. Lovely pass by the Spanish driver. Ma looks like he's interested in having a nibble at the bike of the Spaniard, but no opportunity at this moment in time. Santiago Rutia as well in the mix at the front of the field. No, but Mikulis again looks to the inside again, doesn't have the overlap. There is Marco Bute to the outside of Ted Bjork, thinks better of it. Good, intelligent racing from Marco there. He drops back behind the Lincoln Co. Lives to fight another day, has a look to the inside, thinks better of it. Ted Bjork has the inside line covered. Marco Bute, though, at this moment in time, is certainly on his tippy toes. And while he's squabbling and trying to find an opportunity, Mikel Afkona has disposed of Marching Quara and makes the way past. And here we go again. Ted Bjork to the inside. Bute to the outside. Afkona thinks, thank you very much, boys. You can play. I'll play as well. And I'll take that position away. Mikel Afkona, one position gained. Marco Bute is realising this is what touring cars like on the world stage. Marching Quara well, finds space where there's no space. To the outside. He's a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of racing. But Marching Will he be able to hold on? Will he find grip in these greasy conditions? Not quite. Marco Bute strongly takes that place back and he just slots in behind Mikel Athcona. Ted Bjork, though, making a run for it at the front of the field in fourth place. And there's a little bit of a variation of line, shall we say, through that final turn. Seems to be about even though Santiago Rutia, flash of the headlights, he's desperate, absolutely desperate to find a way past his teammate and the rest of the field ahead. But at the front of the field, off camera, Norbert Mikulis, race leader. Norbert Mikulis has, man has managed to find a way past Jan Elishay. We didn't see that in the live. Hopefully we'll see that again in a moment. But Norbert, pole position, dropped to a second place as Jan got the better launch off the line. But the Hungarian driver has rectified that very quickly indeed. It's only the third lap of the race. And the number 105, the winner last season, is back in a race lead. So let's have a look then. Jan, different lines through the final corner. Jan running very much around the outside of the circuit, catches that painted surface, very slippery offline, courtesy of the rain. That compromises him, and a very easy overtake at the end for Norby to take a race lead with three of 15 laps in the books. Good stuff there then from the Hungarian driver. Nice clean racing between them. Let's turn our attention though a little bit further back. Ted Bjork, triple one, fourth position just behind him. Mikel Athkona, Sami Taufik. We saw him in all sorts of drama. There's damage to the front of the car. Sami in the Volcano Audi pulls well away from the racing surface. So good driving from Sami, minimizing the uh, potential for any intervention into this race with a safety car. Not sure what has happened to the Moroccan driver, but such a shame was running in 10th position. is now very much out of the race. Big heavy lockup. We can see the damage to the front of his Volcano motorsports machine. And that is a really, really disappointing end for the 2-1-2. Not done much racing as Sami Taufik over the course of the last couple of years since uh, a very impressive TCR Europe campaign and Tofik uh, 
one thing that man needs is time behind the wheel. And unfortunately, so early in this race, comes to his conclusion. Let's have a look at what's happening now. Mikel Ascona from Ted Bjork. Bjork had a gap. Now he's very much as one with the Hyundai driver. Ascona doesn't have enough room around the outside of the track. Marco Buti decides this looks like a whole host of fun and wants to come and play with these two as well. Jan Elishe on the defensive further up from the other. Goat racing uh, Honda FL05. Jan Elishe under pressure from Esteban Gurrier. It's a great turn of pace from that Honda in this portion of the race. Elishe on the defensive line at the back of your screen as well. You can see Marco Bucci trying to find a way past not only Mikel Athcona, but Ted Bjork ahead just behind Santiago Ruti and Marching Hua come together. A little bit of contact in the accordion effect. John Philippi keeping a watching brief behind, trying and waiting for opportunity as everybody's squabbling over the same piece of tarmac, but Santiago Arrutia really hard on the charge at this moment in time. And the cork in the proverbial bottle is this little pack of cars in front. We'll come back to that one. Let's take a look at this replay then. Ted Bjork on the defensive, nose to tail for a few cars, contact as well for Booty. Gets hit from behind by the uh, Lincoln Coast Cyan Racing. They teammates come together. This is on board and uh, Every bit of racetrack is just filled with TCR cars. Fantastic stuff from these drivers. If anybody thought that this was uh, the first race of the season and they take it easy, you'd be thinking very wrong indeed. And Gabriele Tarquini, not happy one bit about something that's happening down there. But uh, his man, Mikel Athcona, he knows how to get a good race going. Athcona will not be perturbed one iota by the rubbing is racing. He'll be charging forward as best as possible. Meanwhile, speaking of charging forward, remember that we saw Bebu Girolami stationary on the grid when everybody else was going. Well, already he's up to 13th position. So Girolami, long way, 23 seconds away, in fact, from the race lead, but working his way forward as again. Marco Buti has a look at Mikel Athcona. Athcona, for his good measure, has a look at Ted Bjork, just behind Santi Arrutia in seventh position. Can't find any way past. At this moment in time, we've still got 10 laps to go as Esteban Gurrieri gets very close indeed to Jan Elishe. But at the moment, it is a case of watching and waiting and strategically planning where to take that overtake. Jan Elishe struggling, it seems, at this moment in time in the Lincoln Co. Cyan machine, holding on to second position, but very quickly being left to the tune of 2.3 seconds to that man, Nova Mikulis, at the front of the field. Great stuff there, the little fight for second position. Gurrieri, this is perfect for the Argentine driver. Uh, Gurrieri, Elishe together, clean air in front, clean air behind. They've got the real estate to have a squabble. What you don't want to be doing is drawing yourself towards this battle that we're looking at now. Take a look at the differing lines as the driver's trying to find grip, trying to find a dry bit of racetrack in order for these Kumo tires to sink down into the ground and offer up the grip they need through that final corner. If you launch well, off of the final turn. That will reward you all the way down this racetrack. Whoa, that's a nice bit of driving from the Honda there, the 199. Very sideways indeed. Marco Bute, very much aggressive. And let's have a quick look. Let's take a break from this one and have a quick look at what happened at the start of the race. Good launch there from Elishe on the outside of the front row. There is Bebo Girolami stationary at the back of the grid. Thankfully, everybody avoided the Hyundai driver. This is on board with John Philippi. Good start in the Audi. Audi's are known to be good off the line. John Philippi, very aggressive, coming off the line into this first sweeping left-hander. Everybody sort of is gobbling up the cars in front. Athcona just uh, minimising the amount of racing room he's got. He can't quite get back onto the racing line. That's Mar that we can see to our right-hand side. Then look at the squabble through the windscreen as you see Everybody fighting over the same bit of tarmac. John looks to the outside line, not enough grip, not enough room. He has to go off the racing surface, drops back behind Chinese driver Marching Hua and uh, John Philippi 
has the pace, but just didn't have the real estate in which to convert that into position gains. In fact, he lost a spot uh, during that little off-track incident. That's Marco Bouti that we're looking at when he went to the inside of Mikel Ascona, and that was a good move by the young Italian driver, Marco Bouti. Very much a driver to watch for the future, 19 years of age. In fact, frankly, a driver to watch for the here and now as well. Big, uh, big impression Marco Bouti's made on the world of tin top touring cars as we have seven laps of 15 in the books for the opening round of the Kumo TCR FIA TCR World Tour here at Vallelonga. Noble Miklis is 3.5 seconds to the good from Jan Alishay at this moment in time. Esteban Gurrieri, though, shadowing the French driver. Third, second and third position. Good drive, this, from Esteban Gurrieri. Solid points, great performance. And at this moment in time, Esteban will feel he's got an opportunity to find a way past the Frenchman. Marco Bouti definitely feels he's got an opportunity to find a way past Ted Bjork. The problem is, he's not got enough space to find a way past Ted. In fact, as I speak, he locks up, runs a little bit wide. That makes him vulnerable to Mikel Athcona behind Santia Rutia, showing his nose, no real opportunity, but just reminding the Hyundai ahead that there is a Lincoln Co. Cyan racing car that would very much like to liberate that sixth position from Mikel. So uh, the charge continues for Santia Rutia, marching while earlier dramas and now a thing of the past. He's holding a strong eighth position ahead of John Philippi Barberi doing great work for the Coppa Italia drivers up into 10th position just ahead of Palati as well as uh, Bebu Giralami makes another position into 12th. Simenez is the one that he has overtaken on the last few corners. So Bebu, 23.8 seconds away from our race lead, but certainly in the hunt for a top 10 as we ride on board Jan Alishay. Let's take a moment to have a look at the Cyan Lincoln Co machine around this beautiful Valley Longa circuit. Fantastic stuff there on board with the 168 Jan Elisha. It's such a, a commitment heavy circuit is Valle Lunga. You really got to be forceful behind the wheel. In fact, speaking of forceful, Ted Bjork, Marco Booty, round 42 is on again. Booty has the outside line and the overlap as well, tries to close the door. Ted Bjork does not want to concede that position. Mikel Kona smells opportunity around the outside. The outside is never the comfortablest place to be. Ted Bjork recognizes the threat, tries to shut the door, but the 196 has track position, has the inside line, and that is a beautiful move. Afkona decides Marco Bouti's next in line as well. Two positions in one move. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Marco Bouti, unbelievable. Does not know where Afkona came from, but that is a beautiful pass by Mikel Afkona. Takes the position away, moves himself up into fourth place. And folks at home, if you drive touring cars or aspire to drive touring cars, take a leaf out of Mikel Athcona's book. That's how you overtake. Beautiful aggression, controlled aggression, saw an opportunity and snatched it up. Fourth position, his, his reward. And Marco Bute will not know where that BRC machine came from, but he'll not be happy about it. He's found a way past Ted and it's been replaced by a different car. Can Bouti reconfigure? Can he find a way past? He gets a very nice launch indeed off of the final turn, and Marco Bouti on the return, attacking again, just lost that position, does not fancy giving it up, and takes the position away. Marco Bouti back into fifth, fourth, sorry. Mikel Athcona down to fifth position, Ted Bjork, down to sixth position, and just behind him, a light ablaze, Santiago Arrutia trying to find a way past, but no chance on this opportunity. Six more laps to go, though. This is a story and a fight that I'm very, very sure is going to get even more exciting as we come to the conclusion of this opening race of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour here at Valle Longa. John Philippi keeping a watching brief, very much as John Philippi does. Doesn't get involved in the drama, really. You never really see him in the middle of the fight. He's one of those drivers that just goes about, does his job, and delivers the result at the checkered flag. Philippi keeping the car clean, keeping an eye on this squabble. Three 
Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Machines, nose to tail ahead of him. John Phillips has got a lot of work, it has to be said, to do to find a way past. But let's see how that one progresses as we watch a replay once again. This is Marco Butte, very much like we saw for the change of lead at the front of the field. A little mistake, and then from Athcona, Butte gets the run off the final corner, carries that advantage all the way down to the first breaking event and for his benefit takes track position and fourth place with it. Great drive thus far from uh, young Italian star Marco Butte in the GOAT Racing Honda Civic. Remember, GOAT Racing, brand new team to touring car racing and uh, making their mark, it has to be said, here at Valle Longa. Great stuff from Butte. GOAT cars in third and fourth. Noah Miklis, though, still our race leader from Jan Elishe. Gurrieri, as we mentioned, in third, rounding out the podium. Marco Butti currently in fourth. Then it's Mikel Acona, Ted Bjork, Santiago Rutia, and Marcin Gua, all as one with Santiago Rutia looking like he fancies his chances. And there we go. Ted deciding, discretion, better part of valor, and allowing his Uruguayan teammate in front to go after the Afcona and Booty fight ahead. Intelligent drive in there from Ted Bjork, playing the team game, recognises that uh, Ruti had an opportunity, didn't fight too hard, and Ted currently is just ahead of marching war, but Mar on the defensive from John Philippi behind. So Philippi now has come to the conclusion, I think it's fair to say, that it's time to pull the pin. It's time now to get a little bit more aggressive. An opportunity is not going to present itself, so you have to force the issue. This is on board in the Audi machine of John Philippi. Look how hard he's having to work on the wheel. Great pictures, by the way, on board in the touring cars. Really puts you in the seat of the action in a TCR touring car. Fabulous machines, fabulous to see on circuit, and I'm sure even better to drive. And John Philippi being uh, a little bit cautious this moment in time, waiting to see if there's any uh, solid opportunities. But the Saturian cars, we don't wait for full chances. Half chances are more than good enough. So let's see if Philippi uh, can get the elbows out over the course of the next five laps or so and move up from the current ninth position he finds himself in. Nicholas still leading this race. We've not seen much of the 39-year-old Hungarian driver, Norbert Nicholas, but he is our race leader. 17 minutes in the book, four laps still to go, and 3.4 seconds is the advantage for the uh, 105. And look at that one. That is night and day in the world of touring car racing. We don't see that very often, and that just goes to show the extremely high level that the Hungarian is currently operating at. Jan Elishe, we know, is one of the best touring car drivers on the planet. So to pull away from the Lincoln Co. Cyan machine, very impressive indeed, as we're looking at this little squabble in the uh, Coppa Italia drivers. That is Fernandez trying to find a way past Kaya. Kaya obviously still running on the racetrack, and uh, Fernandez gets that position. Oh, in fact, I think Kaya actually may well be a lap down now, so Fernandez Circulated in 14th at this moment in time, but a good four seconds away from Simenez ahead, the next driver that he's trying to find a way past. Filippo Barberi that we see there as well, the Italian. Very well put together Audi indeed for uh, Barberi, the uh, Ecoa racing machine that's uh, very well known in uh, TCR Italy, very successful team and uh, Impressive driving so far in 11th place for Filippo Barberi, the front runner of the Coppa Italia regulars, and just behind Bebu Girolami, who has indeed moved up into the top 10, as we predicted a few laps ago. So uh, Bebu Girolami on the recovery drive, but showing commendable pace. His fastest, his last lap, sorry, for Girolami was a 42.446. Plays a 41.963 for his teammate Norbert Miklis ahead. But don't forget, Girolami has the traffic, had to make the way past his rivals as well. So the Argentine still showing good pace indeed. Palate that we're looking at there now, that is the number one adorning the windscreen of that Audi RS3 LMS. And Palate having a good drive in 12th position. You can see behind Simenez is the man that started at the front of the uh, Coppa Italia regulars. He was, uh, when he started this race, 11th on the grid, so a couple of positions lost. And Palati doing really, really good work there in 12th position. He's got four seconds to make to Barberi ahead of him. 
Noah Mikulis, though, is a man that's doing the best work so far in this field, it has to be said. 3.1 seconds, slightly reduced is the advantage to Jan Alishe. Bit of traffic coming up for uh, Noah Mikulis as well, but nothing that I'm sure the Hungarian were too worried about as we ride on board. 127 John Philippi again, the Volcano Motorsport Machine. Volcano making their debut on the world stage here in the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. French driver John Philippi looks like he doesn't quite have the pace of the Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Machines ahead. He's starting to drop back now in ninth position. He's got a big, big advantage of 12 seconds over Girolami behind, so no threat from behind. But Philippi, at this stage, not able to go with the cars ahead of him. Still opportunity, though, as these drivers start to squabble behind and Noah Michaelis last time around, a 42.4, plays a 41.8. Eight for Jan Alishay, so that gap has now reduced to two and a half seconds. Is this the start of the comeback for the Lincoln Co driver? Keep an eye on that one as we get into the final couple of laps. Keep an eye on Mikel Athcona as well, settling in to fifth position from Santiago Arutia. These two drivers now have. They've had a big squabble up to this point, but unfortunately, I think that one, the wind is going out of the sails of Simenez that we're looking at here. 12th position, remember, 11th position, sorry, on the grid. Lost a couple of places, but he's very hungry indeed in the Honda to find a way past the Audi ahead. Simenez now gets a good run to the right hand and looks to the outside, goes to the inside, line covered by Palati. Palati has the uh, inside line, but can Simenez get the switch back? Yes, he can. The nose of that Honda, very strong indeed on the number 82 machine. Simonez now gets a good run. Do the sweep, keep it clean at this part of the racetrack. Don't use too much curb. Don't run off of the racing line. And this gives opportunity. Sandro Palati now on the defensive again. Jacopo Simonez can't find a way past, but it all looks very much inevitable that the Honda will have that position in the next two laps. Can Paletti defend and defend within the rule set as well? Of course, only one move. Let's be very cautious not to be weaving all over the racetrack and this good driving from both drivers at this moment in time. Very clean, very fair, very impressive racing from the Coppa Italia. Turismo regulars lock up for the Audi there, though. Paletti, uh, Simone, should I say, sorry. Would like to see things like that one. Shows there's a bit of pressure starting to show on his rival, but Palate, great driving at this moment in time to hold on to what is currently 12th position. 14 of 15 laps in the books. No, but Michaelis, once again, that gap has been reduced. 1.9 seconds, it's still comfortable, but it is getting smaller between himself and Jan Alishe. Can Jan find the pace in the final few moments of this race? To have a challenge with his Hungarian rival. Bit of traffic as well for good measure, that is one of the Coppa Italia drivers just uh, staying out of the way, trying not to influence anything in the dying embers of this race. Good driving from all concerned to make sure that uh, no traffic has any impact to the overall result. Marco, uh, sorry, not Marco Buti, I apologise. We've seen, forget that one, let's go to Victor Fernandez that is uh, off the race track at this moment in time. Fernandez was running in 14th position. There we go, in fact, that's a much bigger moment than I expected. Fernandez backwards across the gravel. Very smart driving indeed to make sure he's pointing in the right direction and back on the loud pedal. But Victor Fernandez will certainly... Um, well, I've woken up somewhat, I think it's fair to say, from that incident. The uh, Auto Club RC2 Valles driver survives that one, remains in 14th position. He's got a good gap to Marisdorfer behind, so uh, no harm, no foul for Victor Fernandez. Just a bit of a cleaning up job to do when he gets back to the paddock before race two tomorrow. As we look at our race leader, Norbert Michaelis. Crosses the timing being to start the final lap. Final lap, folks, already. Can you believe it? This has been a non-stop action fest. Michaelis through the gravel, courtesy of Victor Fernandez. No trouble whatsoever for our reigning champion. As the 105 machine, the BRC Hyundai N Squadra Corsa, the facelifted car for 2024, continues to lead the field, as we've seen so many times before. Jan Elishé, second position. Just behind him, Esteban Gurrieri keeping the Frenchman very much on his toes. Elishe closing, closing, closing. Two seconds, though, is now the gap. So Norby 
just needs to bring this one across the line to take the first victory of the year. John Philippi, I'm seeing, has uh, moved up to eighth position, we see on the timing screen, uh, to the uh, detriment of Marching Hua. So John did eventually pull the trigger on a move on the final lap of the race. And uh, let's see if the Frenchman can keep hold of that as we focus on our leading trio of drivers for the final lap through the final corners here at Valle Lunga. Really spectacular drone shots that we see here. Fantastic from the TV production, the pictures and the information that they bring to us, as always, of the very highest order. And Norbert Michaelis. And there we go. There's a change in position as well. Did you see the Lincoln Co's at the back of your shell? I'm not quite sure exactly who that was, but we'll look at that one in a moment. But Norbert Michaelis, 2023 was his for the taking. And 2024, picking up exactly where he lets off. Norman Michaelis for BRC Hyundai N, Squadra Corsa, takes the very first win of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. Jan Alishé crosses the line in second from Esteban Gurrieri, Marco Butte, Mikel Afcona in fourth and fifth position. And then Ted Bjork and Santiago Arutia on the final lap, exchange positions. Ted takes sixth position, Santi in seventh, Marching Hua in eighth place from John Philippi. And in uh, tenth position, Bebu Girolami, following that stall or that lack of getaway, shall we say, at the start, crosses the line in tenth place. A good recovery drive from Bebu Girolami. Barberi in eleventh place, ten seconds further back. Good result for Barberi. Palati uh, is the driver, Sandro Palati, the driver that won out in that battle between himself and Jacobo Simonez. 12th, 13th positions for those two and celebrations at BRC. Fantastic performance from the Italian squad. The car might look ever so slightly different than it did at the end of 2023, but it's just as quick. It's just as good. And in the hands of Norbert Michaelis, the best of the best today here at Vallelunga. Fantastic performance, pole position. He even had to make an overtake on Jan Elishé after a slower start for the Hyundai driver. A checkered flag. The points will go to Norbe in what was a commanding, it has to be said, performance from car number 105. Let's take a look at what happened here. This is John Philippi getting hungry. A little bit of a tap to the back of marching while that sent the Chinese driver off into the scenery mark. Good car control. Fantastic, in fact, car control there. On the lock stops, keeps the foot planted to the floor, but he did lose that position, and Philippi did give, well, did lose that, did return the position at the chequered flag. He dropped down back to ninth place, so Ma took that position back. Whether that was choreographed or whether that was uh, hard fire racing on the track, we didn't see it on the live. Hopefully we'll find that one out post-event, but uh, most important of all is our race winner. The first race winner of 2024 in the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. And with it, that is 30 points for Norbert Michaelis. That gives him a 10, provisional, let's say, provisional 10-point advantage over Jan Alishé in second, Esteban Gurrieri, for five points further back. In third position, Miklas Athcona is now fourth in the provisional driver standings. Marco Buti fifth, and Ted Bjork in sixth position. 25, Arias of our leader, Norbert Michaelis. Santiago Rutia in seventh from Marching Hua. John Philippi, ninth. Bebu Girolami in tenth. And then Barberi and Sandro Palati are 11th and 12th position. Great drive from Norbe. Fantastic from the Hungarian driver. 39 years of age, as I say. Former champion, multiple champion, in fact. And he's picking up very much where he left off in 2023. As we expect, might be another year older, but he's certainly absolutely no slower than when we last saw him in 23. An incredibly talented driver, beautiful by the way scenes. Look at that as the uh, pit lane deviates into the paddock for Norby to park under the podium. And this is confirmation of the provisional race results for round one. Norbert Michaelis is your race winner. From Jan Alishé, Esteban Gurrieri makes the podium on his return to top-level touring cars. Marco Butte, Mikel Athcona and Ted Bjork round out the top six runners. And the crowd's expectant for their man Norbe to get out there and celebrate a race win. Don't forget, though, we're back in action again tomorrow. So this is, uh, there'll be no slapping of the hood. They'll uh, be very keen to, no celebrating tonight, be very keen to prepare for uh, a big day of action again tomorrow. There we go. 
great stuff. Wave to the crowd, a gentle tap of the hood. Respect the car, Norby, good man. Thumbs up to the camera as well. And then the congratulations of his BRC Hyundai N. Squadra Corsa team, a very well-deserved race victory indeed for NM5, Norbert Michaelis. Race winner once again. Superb stuff. And a great shout-out as well, it has to be said, to Esteban Gurrieri and Goat Racing, the team manager, Pepe Oriola, speaking to Lisa in qualifying earlier today. was saying how difficult it's been to get the car, uh, get the team, in fact, formed together, working in unison, and then racing not only in the World Tour, but, of course, in uh, TCR Europe as well. So Goat Racing, lots of Hondas, and a really, really strong performance from them and from Esteban Gurrieri and Marco Buti in particular behind the wheel of the Honda. And there we can see Lisa ready to talk to our race winner. So, number Michaelis is with Lisa. Let's head down to talk to our race winner. Norbert Michelis, massive congratulations to you. You picked off right where you left off in 2023. Nice move on Urshelay there to bring home a comfortable race win. Yeah, I mean, uh, start wasn't easy because we still had a slippery line, so I had a lot of wheel spin, lost the position, but the car felt good from the first moment. And then driving behind Jan, was a bit easier for me to understand where the grip is and uh, I already thought about this move one lap earlier because I saw him taking the inside and I just saw that on the outside you have more grip and it was easy to do the cutback but still a very good race from Esteban and Jan, congrats to them, very happy for myself. Great job, thanks Norbert. The uh, victory once again, super performance from Norby. Always good to hear from him as he gets ready to go to the podium now alongside Jan Alishe and Esteban Gurrieri. And interesting what Norby would say there, that uh, dropping back into second position allowed him to observe where the grip is from Jan Alishe ahead. And that helped him devise a strategy to find a way past the French driver. So Norby really intelligent racecraft from the Hungarian that rewards him very nicely indeed with not only the win, but of course also the uh, lead, the lead of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour after the opening race of the year. We're back in action again though tomorrow, 15-15 CEST for race two, hopefully in better weather conditions than we've had today. And Norby, really, really strong drive, really strong performance. And uh, I hope that we see you all again for race two tomorrow. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from the race that we've just witnessed. Great scenes there from the opening round of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour here at Valley Lunga. Fantastic racing action, as you would come to expect from the world of tin top touring cars. The drivers are preparing, celebrating behind the scenes, preparing to take to the podium the first one of the year and a beautiful po podium here at Valley Lunga. It is indeed in the heart of the paddock. Plenty of spectators down there admiring these TCR touring cars, a great category of racing, national and regional championships as Marcello Lotte on the grid, the WSC president was talking about. And it's really, I implore you, if you have an opportunity to go and watch these touring cars, let's have a quick listen in on Jan and Esteban, see if we can hear what they're talking about during the race.
dissecting their own races, it uh, seems to be. And uh, Jan, I'm sure, will have a lot to consider, it is fair to say, after what was, I think, probably a little bit disappointed in the pace of the Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Machine. Uh, early race lead, lost it to Norby, and then dropped at 1.3 and a half seconds in arrear. So uh, Lincoln Co. have a bit of head scratching, a bit of thinking to do overnight before race two. No, but Michaelis getting involved as well. Let's see if we can hear a bit more of what's been said. Great stuff, great respect between the three rivals as well, it has to be said. Everybody in the uh, TCR family of pilot, they're fierce, fierce rivals, of course, out on the racetrack, but there's great respect, camaraderie and friendship amongst them. Earlier yesterday, we had a tour of Rome with the uh, Kumo Dri TCR World Tour drivers and Coppa Italia Turismo drivers, open-top bus driving through the city, and everybody was together talking, making jokes, taking selfies together. It really is a family atmosphere here in the world of uh, TCR racing, and it's spectacular to see that when the visor goes down, friendships, relationships are forgotten, and it's all about the on-track product, but when you're back in the paddock again, there's a real strong sense of unity uh, between each and every one of these drivers, and a bit of dissecting, uh, apologies for any uh, fruity language that may have taken place there, but uh, great stuff from all three of these uh, podium finishers in the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. And for all of the drivers in incredibly difficult conditions, a greasy circuit, slick tyres, very low temperatures. And yet we had a very clean race and now we have a podium celebration. There is Esteban Guerrieri, happy with his third position, I'm sure. Congratulations there to our three drivers and the winning team. Presenting the drivers' trophies today, we have the president of Vallelunga Circuit, Mr. Alfredo Scala. You go uh, the third, okay. and first. And then the, the, the First presenting to Goat Racing, Esteban Guerreri. Just have to present the trophies. Third place to Goat Racing, Esteban Guerreri. Second place, Lincoln Coast and Racing, Jan Ershele. And of course, the winner. We have from BRC Hyundai Squad, of course, there, Norbe Michelis. Congratulations to Norbe. 
for the first round here in Vallelunga. And of course, not forgetting the winner, winning team presented as well. Okay, I'd like to congratulate all the guys there. Time now for a family photo. Okay, the camera guy's getting out of the way. Enjoy the champagne, guys. Congratulations for the first round here in Vallelunga. There we go then, that is our podium. The top three drivers in the first race of the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour 2024 here at Valle Lunga. Esteban Gurrieri, don't forget your trophy, sunshine. There you go. Great stuff for Esteban Nova Michalis, our race winner, Jan Alishay. In second, Esteban Gurrieri rounding out that podium. And once again, Marco Buti, Mikel Kona, Ted Bjorki, your top six, Santiago Arrutia, Marching War, John Philippi, and Bebu Girolami round out the 10 finishers from the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. Sammy Taufik from the World Tour did head into retirement, unfortunately. And then when we're looking at the Coppa Italia series, some great performances as well from those drivers that joined us for this weekend's racing action. The first of those drivers to cross the finishing line that you can see there is Barberi in 11th position. Filippo Barberi for a Coa racing in the Audi RS3 LMS TCR. Sandro Palate just behind in a great fight with Simonez, the 12th and 13th position cars separated by less than one second at the flag. Philip Mattersdorfer in 14th place as well there for the Opal and they're about to have their uh, podium celebration as well for the Coppa Italia drivers. So we're just preparing those drivers, getting ready to go out on there, spray the champagne and celebrate their own successes as well for the Italian Coppa Italia Turismo series. And once again, these are the provisional points after qualification and the opening race of the year. And just like we ended 2023, Norbert Michaelis is the man ahead of the field. He has 45 points to his name from Jan Elishay Esteban Gurrieri in third place. Three different brands in the top three positions in the standings. Fantastic to see a Gurrieri, a strong performance, as now it is time for the Coppa Italia podium. And there we see some very happy drivers indeed. Maybe I suppose Simone is not quite as happy that he just missed out the opportunity to take that second uh, place away from his rival. So getting together for the family photo, of course, as is tradition, then they'll be awarded their trophies and uh, the spraying of the champagne. Fantastic, there we go, that's the national anthems and now it is time for the champagne to be sprayed once the trophies are in hand for these drivers. Great stuff from all concerned, superb driving from each and every one of these drivers put on a fabulous show at home in front of the passionate Italian crowds. Really, really strong performance. Wonderful to see a mix of drivers from National Series Coppa Italia uh, Turismo on this occasion joining up with the Kumo FIA TCR World Tour. And a reminder to you all, we're back in action again, 1425 CEST tomorrow on the TCR TV YouTube channel. So thank you all for your time. And until next time, from us all, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>